Well, friend, I want to just invite you to be a part of our magazine family. Prophecy in the News has done a magazine for a number of years. We have thousands of subscribers across uh, the nation and some other parts, parts of the world. This is available. A year subscription is thirty four ninety five, And the reason it's at that price is there is always uh, a special bonus offer. And you can go to our website to see what the current one is. Uh, you call the 800 number on your screen and get the information over the phone. But by paying that, you get 12 editions mailed to your home, plus you get the special bonus offers. If you only want the magazine in an electric form, electronic format and no special offer, it's $24.95 a year. But we would love for you to be part of our family. The magazine always has very timely articles. These are by some of guests and authors uh, that are a part of us. I always have an article. We have feature articles from the archives of J.R. Church and outstanding articles by Bob Carnuke on archaeology. Hope you'll join our magazine family. Welcome to Prophecy in the News. Thank you for watching this broadcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Clarkson. My guest today is our good friend, Dan Goodwin. Hello, brother. Good to see you again, brother Kevin. Man from the Blue Hills of Kentucky. Always good to be on Prophecy in the News. I love this program and uh, uh, I, ju I just think it's one of the most important prophecy programs that, that anybody could listen to. I, I really am honored to be here today. We're glad to have you, Dan. We're, we love your heart. You're an evangelist first and foremost. You mm -hmm. share the good news of Jesus Christ. But you also believe in the uh, pre-tribulation, pre-millennial return of yes, Jesus. Yes, sir. I, I think well, here we are at the end of all things. And I, I, don't, I just don't see anything more important than telling people Jesus is coming back. Amen. Not only is it a soul winning tool, but it's a, it's a getting right tool. It's, Amen. it's a discipleship tool. Absolutely. Well, these are crazy days we're living in. And they sure uh, are. we'll uh, have plenty to talk about here uh, during this show. But, you know, uh, you had one of our uh, best selling books, I think, uh, out of Prophecy in the News in the last year, God's Final Jubilee. You've kind of come and revamped that, added some new chapters. Uh, put some new information in based on things that happened in the fall of 2015. And what? we'd like to talk with you about that today. Yes, sir. And uh, we did. We, uh, I believe this, Brother Kevin, this will sound proud, but it's not. Uh, I believe apart from the Bible, I believe this book, God's Final Jubilee, is the most important book in America. Wow. I don't say that because I wrote it. I'm the author and authors yeah. are biased. Um but I mean, I, and I've told the story before on your program, how I sat down at my kitchen table two o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, trying to write this book for years. And then all of a sudden it was time and sat there, had a little heater at my feet. Uh, it was cold. You know, I mean, in the, out the kitchen, right. I, I, I commandeered the kitchen table. I mean, I set my laptop out there, books and papers and, and, uh, and began typing with two fingers. That's how I type. And, uh, and out came this book, and I, I'm not I'm not being spooky. I, I don't I don't mean God wrote it and uh, did something. You, you just spooky, felt uh, you you just felt uh, impelled uh, to write it. it and I wrote it. A lot forth. of things. These things were up here. I had learned a lot. Of, I believe God gave me some some missing pieces of the puzzle that maybe some other guys didn't have. And I don't mean that I'm something special because I'm not. I'm uh, I'm not one of these tremendously smart people. I don't, I don't believe, <laughs> uh, but. They're just, I sat down at the table and, and boy, just started writing the chapters, putting it all together, long process. And you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. A lot of work uh, to write. And I've written six or eight books. I've written some study guides. And, and I really believe that this is the, is the most important book. I know it's the most important book I've ever written. I believe it's the most important book in America, prophecy-wise, apart from the Bible, of course. And uh, so what I decided is, we need to update this thing because 2016 is on us now. And I said, this book's liable to get pushed on the back shelf because, uh, you know, prophecy books that are old, who wants to read an old prophecy book? Yeah. So uh, I sat down, I edited the book. We changed some things in it, uh, added three more chapters. Uh, it's probably 30, 25, 30 more pages in the book. Uh, put a new cover on it, made it. Uh, we edited the inside. It's real fancy now and did some more proofreading. Uh, folks that are getting it, even folks that read the original two, you know, 2014 version, they're feeling like it's a new book. And in a way it is. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so there it is. I, uh, uh, I think it's an important book and, uh, I don't, I don't believe anything's changed. I still think we're at the end of this thing. Well, I'd like to set the, um, the stage if I could by the scripture always, you know, this is our foundation. Yes, sir. And I want to come into Leviticus 25, which is the very chapter about the Jubilee. 
And as you and I were talking before the program, Dan, uh, Leviticus 23 actually forecasts and prescribes the seven festivals right. of Israel. But they also had in the seventh year, the Shemitah, and every seven years they were to observe, uh, let the land lay fallow and right. not plant and not reap and just uh, trust God. And uh, we've been through a season of that. But every seven, seven years or 49 years, then it was time for a special 50th year, which was called the Jubilee. Yes. So let me read these verses out of Leviticus 25, uh, verse 8 and following. God speaking to us. He says to the Jewish nation, thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And you shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land. By the way, that phrase is on our liberty bell, isn't right, it? Right, it is. In Philadelphia. You shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family, and jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Yes, sir. What a, uh, first of all, for the Jewish nation, uh, what a faith challenge, because... You know, if you really lived that, and Ooh. we know they failed to do it because they got sent to Babylon for 70 years. God collected on those right. Shemitah on years. Those Shemitah years, right. But you know, if you did this right, think about the 49th year you didn't sow and plant, and now the 50th year you're not supposed to. Right. So two years in a row, I'm not going to, you know, be economically involved, except God's going to restore land and family. It's kind of like tithing, isn't it? You've got to trust God. People say, I can't afford to tithe. Uh, we couldn't afford to observe this. And, and I always say, year. you can't afford not to tithe. Yeah. Because God's going to get his tithe just like he got his Sabbath. He did. And if we don't give God what's his, uh, judgment comes upon us. You know, I've, I've kind of taught it this way for years. I, I think if we don't give the tithe, that God lets the devil collect it. Yeah. And uh, I could almost, I could to the penny tell you stories of church members that have come and given testimonies in my church. Pastor, we failed to, you know, honor the Lord and tithe. And sure yeah. enough, the dryer broke. And, you know, the yeah. repair bill was exactly what the tithe should have been. Stories like that. Yeah. You know, so God has a way of, uh, you know, and then you not only lose the money, which is why we didn't obey and tithe in the first place. You, you lose, lose the blessing, the blessing yeah. of God and you lose the ability to invest in eternal things just to keep a silly dryer running another right. year. And of course, like you said at the beginning, it all goes back to our, uh, to faith. God says the just shall live by faith. God and wants us to live by faith. Not. And tithing is just a, an act of obedience, proving that we're trusting God. Right. Well, let's jump from the uh, economic platform to the spiritual truth behind this observance. Um, Jubilee. Tell us about that. Jubilee. T of course, that's the title of the book, God's final Jubilee. And the uh, folks are always asking me, what do you mean by God's final Jubilee? It's, very, it's real simple. <laughs> I believe there's going to be 70 Jubilees and then the Lord comes. You like 70. Right. God course, likes the 70. number seven. And uh, I believe there's been 69 so far that have happened since Moses day, uh, 1500 B.C., and then 2,000 years in the New Testament, that's 3,500 years. That will be 70 50-year periods, 70 jubilees, which means the next jubilee on the calendar, whenever it is, is going to be number 70. And I believe that'll be it. I, uh, I don't think there's going to be 71. I don't think there's going to be 72. I believe there'll be 70. And if you go back to Genesis and start with the beginning with Adam, 6,000 years is 120 jubilees, okay. 120 50-year periods. And that reminds me of Genesis 6, verse 3. God says, my spirit shall not always dwell with man, but his days shall be 120 years. Everybody's 
I think everybody's gotten that wrong. Uh, I was always taught that it took 120 years for Noah to build the ark. Uh -huh. And then I found out that's not what the Bible says. It was 100 years or less. Uh, Genesis 5, uh, Noah was 500 years old when his children were born. Right. And the rain came when he was 600. That's 100 years. Yeah, so 100 so, or less. So I think it was less than 100 that he built the ark. So what that means is this verse in Genesis 6, 3 has nothing to do with building the ark. God, in the middle of this terrible thing that's getting ready to happen. God's letting us know my spirit's going to dwell with man for 120 jubilees. That's what I think he's talking 120 generations, which I believe is a, a jubilee uh -huh. period. And uh, so if, if you start in Adam's day and go 6,000 years, we're coming up on the 120th. Right. If you start with Moses, when the jubilee was instituted, we're coming up on 70. Uh, we're coming up on 40 since Jesus came. Okay. And that's an important number too. So they're all pointing to the same place and everything seems to be pointing to the fact that we're getting out of here soon. And of course the Jubilee, what, what's the big deal about the Jubilee? The Jubilee is the property going back to the original owner. That's huge. I mean, isn't that what the whole tribulation's about? Well, yeah, spiritually, you know, the land come back to Israel and Jerusalem came back in 67. Right. But uh, even more cosmically, if I can, <laughs> Christ redeemed uh, the entire planet. He took that scroll and right. broke it open. He took the title deed to earth, Revelation 4 and the and beauty five. of Revelation 5 there is Christ coming and taking the and book now, out of the right hand of the Father. Exactly. And now he's coming to claim that and right. restore it. And I believe when he finishes opening the seven seals, and it's Jesus that does it. Right. It's Jesus that orchestrates the whole tribulation period. I mean, the terrible things that happen, yes. uh, the first four seals that are open, one fourth of the world dies and goes to hell. Gentle, Jesus himself is doing that. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Actually, yeah. the kings and leaders are diving into holes in the earth, crying, hide us hide from, us the, from face the wrath, from of, the the wrath of the lamb. That's right. So Jesus so when actually he, when he finishes in Genesis uh, Revelation six, you get you get to him opening the seals when he finishes the end of Revelation, Revelation 19, 11. I believe Christ comes on the white horse. I believe in his hand will be that scroll, uh -huh. that title deed to the planet. And it'll be the day of atonement because the day of atonement is the Jubilee every 49 years, right. the sixth feast. I believe Christ comes back on the white horse with us, with the saints. Says he comes with the armies of heaven following. And, uh, and we'll have the title deed that he's bought and paid for. He's redeemed the planet. Yes. He comes to the mountain of Olives like he did 2,000 years ago on that little donkey. He's coming back a little different this time, coming back on the white horse. That's right. And he's taking it back, and he's riding down the Kidron Valley in through the Eastern Gate, right over the, the cemetery of the, the Muslim cemetery there the Turks put there in, uh, f uh, you know, 500 years ago in, or whatever. In an effort to stop but, the uh, Messiah's yeah. return. And he's coming in that Eastern Gate, and he's taking over, and he's going to have the title deed in his hand. And that's, the, that's the gist of the whole book. God's final jubilee is coming. And uh, there's, there's, th there's three chapters about the seven feast and what all the feasts mean. And Let me ask you a question, and uh, y you may or may not have a, a precise answer because nobody really does, but some say that there's not a, um, a certainty about which years were the actual seventh sabbatical years because they were not observed that there might have been some some sense of loss of exactly when that fell. How do you respond to that? Oh, well, I, I, I agree with that 100 um, percent. I know Jonathan Kahn. We've talked. Uh, we preached together. He's been on uh, your program. Uh -huh. I like what he's written. Uh, but I think if you pin him down, I, I don't think even the Jews can be sure of this. And you can't trust the Jewish calendar today. I mean, uh, uh, I think they've got the feast days right on the mm -hmm. calendar uh, because when the Lord comes back, he's going to go by those. They're going to set up the temple and they're going to use those feast days that are on the calendar. I think those are right because they're based on the moon anyway. Right. Uh, but the sabbatical cycle, you're right. They have not, there's no record anywhere in the Bible that they ever kept it. Uh, so whether they ever kept it or not, I don't know. There's no record of it. Um, now, the fact that they thought that 2015 is a sabbatical year, it may be. I don't know, um, but I don't think we can ever be knowing. That's one of the mysteries, isn't it? Yeah, uh, trying it to figure to this thing out. You can't be dogmatic. And that's about why it. the Lord says no man knows the day or hour right. and, you know, the date setting. And, you know, uh, we have to be careful. It's interesting. There were some mysteries in the Bible. The church was a mystery. Yes. The church was not understood by nope. the Old Testament people. In fact, it was not understood by the apostles. When Jesus walked the earth, they knew nothing about the church. That's right. They said, Lord, will thou at this time restore unto us the kingdom? 
Well, let's talk about this clock you've got here because it's hey, exactly what we're saying. Exactly what we're saying. Let, We've got a clock this. here. This is a chess clock. I, I don't know if your audience can see that, but uh, I'm messing your cameraman up probably. But oh, no, uh, I'm sure we I'll, can get I'll that. let him uh, zoom in on if he wants to. But that's a good uh, place, right this there. This is a chess clock. I used to play chess, and uh, if your viewers, uh, if, if your viewers are on Facebook, they can go to my Facebook page, God's Final Jubilee. Just look that up. Uh, I have some stuff about the clock. I got a picture of the clock on right. there. I've written some articles about it. Uh, but I, I believe time is like this clock. Now, the clock on the left, if you were a chess player, and I used to play chess pretty seriously, when I would make my move, I'd press my button, and my clock would stop, and my, my opponent's clock would begin, and now he's got to make his move. When he makes his move, he presses the button. Now my clock begins ticking. You've only got so much time or you lose by time in, in, the, in the game of chess. That keeps the game going. Exactly. You'd be there for days playing a game of chess. And, <laughs> uh, would. and I've been hours playing chess before. But uh, this clock is a good illustration of, 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 of God's eternal time. God has an eternal clock in heaven. And uh, I believe the clock on the left would represent the Old Testament and uh, the Jewish clock, the Old Testament. Okay, good. I believe there's going to be 4,000 years on that Old Testament clock. The clock on the right would be the church age, or you could say the New Testament clock. And I believe when the Old Testament ended, God stopped the Old Testament clock, and a new clock began called the church age clock. The clock that we're in that clock right now. And I believe the Old Testament is going to be 4,000 years. I believe our clock's going to be 2,000 years. We get that from Genesis 1, the six days of creation are, are like 6,000 years. Every day represents a thousand year period of history. So, in Psalm 90, where right, Moses, Psalm 90, days with uh, days uh, as a thousand years, a right. thousand years a day. That's a psalm of Moses, actually. Right, so and Moses he's one of the two witnesses by God. Yeah, yeah. A day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years yeah. is a day. Second Peter 3 9, so I think it is. Six days of uh, of activity, and then the six thousand years of human history. Seventh day, God rested. There's the millennium, the kingdom. The millennium, reigns. the thousand year so reign. Yeah, I believe the Old Testament ended on the year 3993, not the year 4000, like everybody thinks. And we might mention to our viewers that um, the mystery of the church is actually called that in Ephesians 3, where Paul's writing from prison. And he says, don't think that me being here is a bad thing. I've, I've been given the knowledge of this mystery uh, that God is working with the Jew and the Gentile. God so, unveiled a mystery yeah. to Paul about the church age. Right. And nobody understood that. They thought Jesus came. He was going to, we're going to set up the kingdom. Yeah. He didn't come. He didn't come for that. He came to die on the cross, establish the church age. Otherwise, the scriptures couldn't be fulfilled. I mean, what, what about all the, yeah, yeah. what about all the future things that were prophesied? The Daniel chapter two and Daniel chapter seven, the four kingdoms of the world, they hadn't all happened yet. And, and this plays to Daniel 70th week because, um, you know, when, there's, uh, there's the two and then the 60, uh, let me get my numbers right. Yep. There's the seven and then the 62. The seven and then the 62, 69 yep. weeks. And that's from the uh, decree to build the city. And that was by Artaxerxes, right. 45 BC. And I believe that timetable with the Jewish calendar uh, runs us right up to the triumphal entry in Palm Sunday. Right. Christ offers himself as king and is rejected, not by the people, the common people, but the official leaders reject right. him. And so the clock stops. And I believe, now I'm not sure when the clock stopped. I've got, I've got some theories about it. It may have stopped on the day of Pentecost. I know that, I know ceremonial law ended at the cross. At no the more cross. lambs had to be killed. Uh, you didn't, no more Sabbath on the, no more, no more right. going to the temple on Sabbath. Right. Uh, now the church would meet on the first day of the week. And, the day uh, of resurrection. But the clock, when it did stop, I believe it stopped at the year 3,993 because the 70th week of Daniel hasn't happened yet. That's in its Old exactly. Testament. You're, adding the, you're leaving seven more seven years Seven years, Israel, which is the 70th week. With this big gap of the, the church, church age, age is in stuck between. in there. The mystery of the church is stuck in there for 2,000 years. When the church ends at the rapture, the, the, right. the clock will stop and the Old Testament will begin again there's seven years missing. Now, I love this analogy. I do. I, I just might add so nobody misunderstands something. The church and Israel are not opponents, per se. Right. As we would be in a chess match where one wins and one loses. Right. Good point. The clock's a great illustration, but you can't carry it to the point of saying, oh, we're going to see who wins this match. The Jewish nation may feel like the church is their enemy, and they've been treated that way for much of the church age, but that's not really true at all because right. God's going to bring this all together in those right. last seven years and into the millennium. 
So when the, when, the, when the rapture happens, and by the way, I believe the rapture will happen at the exact same second that the clock stopped 2,000 years ago. I've got a little theory, and I don't know if we got time to get in in this program, but I believe Stephen's the key to this thing. Stephen the martyr? I, Stephen died, according to Josephus and Bishop Usher, who put the dates in the Schofield Bible, they tell us that Stephen died the same year that Jesus died, 33 A.D. And, uh, you know, everything changes after Stephen dies. So Jesus dies on the cross. Ceremonial law ends. He, the sacrifice is made. But remember, he dies in the 69th week of Daniel. Daniel, Daniel prophesied that the Messiah would be cut off after the, uh, in the 69th week. Right. But you know what? These are sabbatical cycles, seven-year sabbatical cycles, 490 years. They're all seven-year cycles. When does that cycle end? Not Passover. No. It ends on fe- uh, the evening before Feast of Trumpets. One minute before Feast of Trumpets is the end of the sabbatical cycle. I believe that's where the clock stops. And by the way, the Jews believe that creation happened on Tishri 1, which is Feast right. of Trumpets. Right. It would be, do you see how this would be a perfect 6,000 years right to the day and right to the second. Yes. If the rapture happens, or let, let's say the clock, the Old Testament clock stops on Feast of Trumpets 2,000 years ago, it's a perfect yeah. 3,993 years right to the second. The clock's, Stephen is stoned. He's dying, getting ready to die. He looks up to heaven. The Lord Jesus stands he, he's up. He's standing. He, said, he sees Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. The Apostle Paul says Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Is that a contradiction in our Bible? No, both are right. He hadn't, I believe he hadn't sat down yet. I believe the door was still open for the nation of Israel to accept their Messiah. And Stephen's witness was kind of the last. He was the last prophet to preach to Israel to accept the Messiah. And he's talking to those Jewish leaders in the temple. And it's just been a few months. Paul is there. Paul, whose name is Saul. And this is the very tribunal that had uh, executed Jesus. Right. And here, and he's standing, he preaches in chapter 7 of Acts, a whole history lesson from Abraham all the way to Moses. Of course, Abraham's the father of the Jews. Right. Gives a whole history lesson, then he rips their face off. Says, you crucify, and you crucify the Messiah. They pick up stones, and they stone him, and he's dying, and he says, you know, hold this not against them. Receive my and, uh, And Jesus is standing. I believe Jesus sits down. I believe... The clock stops for the Old Testament right there. And there and the, the church, church age begins. begins. Look what happens right after that. Stephen's going to, uh, Paul gets saved, becomes the apostle to the Gentiles. Persecution begins. Yep. Chapter 10, uh, Peter is up on the rooftop having a nap, has a vision. Three times he sees these unclean beasts come down and he's told to rise and eat. Not so, Lord. I don't eat that. I don't eat pork. And, and what, what God hath, call, hath cleansed, call not thou common. Then there's a knock on the door. It's the people from Cornelius' house, Acts chapter 10. Right. And then the light comes on, and Peter says, oh, now I understand. God's going to save the Gentiles. Everything changes after Stephen. Now they're going after the Gentiles, and the church is going to be a, basically a Gentile church with a few Jews uh, in there. I believe that's where the clock stops. And the, and the church age begins. Mm. And I believe that was probably the eve right at the, right at the trumpet sound or feast of trumpets when that happened. Can't prove this in the Bible, but that it fits like a glove. And if the clock stopped there, the church age began there. We, we believe the rapture is going to be the feast of trumpets. Not necessarily the trumpets on their calendar, but the Feast of Trumpets on a new moon. If, the, if that's true, and the Feast of Trumpets, the, the trumpet sounds, our clock stops, Guess what? It's exactly to the second where it stopped 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's like there's not even a gap there. Well, that would be consistent with God. I've, it I've sure remarked, would. And, of course, I'm a preacher, so I can say this, talk about it. <laughs> I said God knows how to tell time, you know, down to the precise nanosecond. I said God knows how to tell time a lot better than a lot of us preachers that are busy in the pulpit. Let me give one more little tidbit here. Okay, and I do want to mention your book. Let me, let me do this, okay. Dan, because of our time. Viewers, we're having a fascinating discussion here. Our guest is Dan Goodwin, evangelist, Bible prophecy teacher. Uh, One of our best-selling books last year was called God's Final Jubilee. This is a revised, updated version. And if you don't have this, you want to get this. If you bought it last year and you still would like to follow the updates and all, you need to get this. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. And Dan says that those who read the last edition and now have purchased this said it's almost like a new book. We're offering God's Final Jubilee by Dan Goodwin 
to our viewers right now for uh, 1995 plus shipping and handling. The way to order this and secure your copy is to go online to prophecyinthenews.com or to call the 800 number on your screen. And by the way, uh, you'll hear more about this, but there will be a conference in 2016. Dan will be one of our guests there. In Colorado. Lord willing. Colorado, Colorado Springs, Spring. if we're still here. So continue. Uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, There's a little tidbit that goes with this. Please. This, this, this is deep stuff, I really. you got you got to think on these. Uh, um, folks ought to go to my Facebook page. i got a little bit more in some articles that I've written there. Sure. God's Final Jubilee Facebook page. But let's just say the rapture was in 2000. Um, we're, not, we're not setting a date. Let's just say the rapture was in 2017. Let's just use that. Okay. If so, the clock stops <clears throat> for the New Testament. Goes back to the Old Testament. Goes back to the Jewish uh, promise. So the clock stops. Let's let's just say it happened in September of 2017. The rapture happened. The clock stops. The Old Testament goes back to the Old Testament for the tribulation period again. Seven years. The tribulation ends, and now the four thousandth year has ended. The rapture. Uh, the, the the tribulation ends. Christ comes back on the white horse. Bang. Time has changed again. Now it comes back. What year is it now? It's still 2017 because the clock stopped. You see, when the Old Testament ended, we didn't keep counting 4001, 4002. Right. We stopped that clock. That clock is, stays right where it stopped. When the rapture happens, the church age clock will stop. We're going to stop in whatever month and year it is. Now, here's, here's, here's the thing. The rapture and the second coming are in the same month and the same year separated by a seven-year seven period of the Old period. Testament. I hope that helps some of you listen. I get a lot of questions about, about people say, well, if the rapture is this year, then, uh, uh, if, or if, the, if Jubilee is this year, then where's the tribulation? The tribulation is, that, is like a little thing stuck in back there. It doesn't affect our time. Mm. Interesting. I, I, I may be a wow. little deep for folks to it's get. Good uh, stuff. It's good stuff. It's great stuff. And uh, our time is, uh, you know, like, our time is the running out here. Yeah, our time is escaping. Let me say to you, man, why wait? Now, these are exciting days uh, to be alive. We haven't even talked about the terrorism that is upon us now, reached our American shores. We're going to be seeing more of this. I think uh, the Lord is trying to give a final wake-up call before the final jubilee. Folks, if you know the Lord, there's never been a time that it's more urgent that you not only live for the Lord and pursue him, but that you proclaim him, you share him with people you know, friends, relatives, associates, neighbors who need to hear the message of Christ. Be a witness for him. Don't be afraid. And then let me just say, if you don't know the Lord, uh, you don't want to wait to the other side of this thing. You don't want to wait till Jesus secretly takes his church out because of this seven year period. It's going to be horrific. And it's very unlikely that you'll trust the Lord if you won't do that now. Call on him today and be saved. He died for you on the cross and rose again. Christ is ready to save you if you'll trust him and call on him. And we'll keep looking up.